Hello and welcome to the Championship Talk podcast. I'm your host Paul O'Toole and joins somewhere is my co-host Thomas Falco. Hello. I always forget which way to point when I put the video in, so it's always, you know, it just happens. So, we've got lots of news to go through, and we're going to start with the sad news that um, Sol Bamba has been diagnosed with cancer. Um, yes. Um, did you see this? Yes, he was diagnosed with non-Hodgkin lymphoma, and he has already undergone his first course of chemotherapy. Um, he will continue to receive support from the Cardiff City Medical Team. There was a statement on their website, which confirmed this as well, um, to say that universally admired by teammates, staff, and supporters in the Welsh capital, Sol has begun his battle in typically positive spirits and will continue to be an integral part of the Bluebirds family and um, quite fitting as well in their game against Norwich I believe it was um, the first game after the news become public they in the warm-up they wore shirts with Bamba 22 and the message we are with you on there as well which sold Bamba released a statement saying he found that very emotional and thanking everyone for the support um, he's um, I believe he's 36 years old um, he's um, He's been, um, I believe, Neil Warnock actually touted him as a possible successor to him when he left Cardiff, didn't he, as his manager? Because I know. Well, he... there's been a recent interview with with, with Sol Bamber, and he said he's not going to let this um, get in the way of him one day managing a football club. So no, and that's good to have them. That's good to have them goals to aim for, and of course, I'm sure I speak for you and anybody who loves football or just. Um, anyone part of the human race really we wish Sol Bamba all the very best in his battle and we have our fingers firmly crossed that he can pull through absolutely we want to move slightly on to the I don't want to be a Covid update every week but it does have a very big bearing on on, on the league that we cover uh, 34 Covid cases in the entire EFL um, that's been significantly down week on week which is good to see 60 clubs recorded a, a, a no positive test at all um, so clearly obviously lockdown working um, which is you know what we would expect to see given that the country you know you can't do anything right now um also the further we move away from christmas the further you know we would expect to see that because obviously everyone went nuts at christmas um but it, what it does mean is it means that it's looking like we might see out the rest of the season yes i know the um the leagues released a joint statement didn't they, which i don't have in front of you but they said they were optimistic that they could see out the season in reasonable time frame as well we've talked about on the podcast before the necessity to finish before Euro 2020 and Euro 2021 obviously um, you'd think do we discuss do we discuss my feelings on international football right now uh, no because we want to keep this below six hours um, what, um, I think this is going to sound condescending to teams in League 1 and League 2 I think you'll find that the Premier League and the Championship are not as affected with having to catch up with games than League One, League Two, and the National League. So it may well be, but if they have to, Leagues One, Two, and the National League could, could probably carry on that little bit further and extend the season a couple of weeks to play catch up if needs be, because you wouldn't have thought that there'd be that many players who are away on international duty would be going that would be required Northern Ireland by in the Euros? Um, well, I don't mean that derogatory. I just no, 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 of... no, no. Northern Ireland, not, they lost in the playoffs, didn't they? But um, there, it wouldn't be as big a group of players as in the Championship and the Premier League. And again, I don't want to sound condescending. We don't want the season to be extended at all because part of the problem with the with the um, cumulative effect of injuries maybe is because there wasn't that pre-season where players could recover mm-hmm. and rehab injuries over the normal period of time. So um, watch this space. But the leagues are optimistic but they can finish in the time frame that's already been given. But of course, again, player safety is paramount as well. So um, it is very much watch this space, Paul. No, and obviously you said it, it does tend to be smaller nations that have teams, uh, players in the, in the, the sort of League One, League Two. Uh, I mentioned Northern Ireland for that reason because they do have to, you know, they do they do look at the lower leagues. That hasn't. You know, oh no, and that's uh, not a der- uh, that's not a derogatory no, comment at all, Paul. I knew what you meant. Um, and obviously, you, you kind of look at some of the, you know, even the you've broader across Europe. There are, you know, a lot of smaller nations have players from from League One and Two. Uh, but you're right. Would it be, would you, you know, there's times when League One and League Two play even when there's an international break. So realistically, could they play while the Euros are going on or even the lead up to that, like that week and the lead up to the Euros? Absolutely. 
it's an option. Should isn't there it, so. be a European ch- Championship? I'm gonna say I'm gonna sort short answer. Absolutely not. It's a stupid idea. Have it next year, given the World Cup is in the sum in the winter anyway. <sighs> But Ooh, I won't. I I, it, 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 you know, you you can. You, it would be a festival of football. Now, don't get me wrong. If your season European Championships, first half of the season World Cup, second half of the season, you know, finally these players will earn their millions, <laughs> and they'll probably be doing the same working hours as some of the nurses currently in the hospital. But. In terms of athletic, in terms of athletic prowess, they'd all be bloody wearing um, knee braces and, and, and arm braces and looking like Terry Butcher. I think by the by the end of uh, <laughs> nothing up but looking like Terry Butcher. The <laughs> <laughs> With the whole bandage on, the, the, you know. It, at the end of the day, you know, these international football should be cancelled. We know why money, um, because obviously you pay for a lot of money from it. They've probably sold a lot of TV rights that they can't get, can't afford to give back. Let's be brutally honest. You know, it's a, it's, it's. Uh, I'm stunned that we're gonna probably now see out domestic seasons. If they can get the European, if they can get European Cup competitions also completed, that will be surprising. Um, I know Arsenal have asked their game against, I think it's Benfica, to be played at neutral venue because of potential travel concerns to Portugal. You, you know, if we've got that kind of issues, we're probably. Let's not look at a European tournament being too close anyway. Um, so I'd think National League. I'd rather the National League finish their season than I would a European tournament. Of course, yes, yeah, yeah. Of, um, of course, you look at the financial ramifications further down the football pyramid. To be fair to UEFA, they are they have um, it has been sort of um, put out there that they could potentially just play that in one place because Euro twenty twenty was initially going to be placed and played. In various different nations, wasn't it? So um, yeah, of course. Which 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 I actually quite like the idea of initially. Yeah, I actually but that, then you weigh it up because you'd have fuller stadiums. Yes, but then obviously, if the fans are not going to be in, then hmm, that's certainly one to talk about I, later I on that, in the year. I think. I think right. I'm going to put this out there now. I think they should play the whole tournament in the country that has vaccinated the most of their population. If you can see my double thumbs up, you'd love that. Controversial, <laughs> controversial. Think... We're going to talk about that towards the end of the season, though, when we know a little bit more, surely. I, I think three days before the European Championships, we still won't know more. <laughs> but anyway, <laughs> we're going to move on to you. Mick Mc... oh, I know, I, it's just the just times. Uh, we're going to move on to Mick McCarthy becoming... Um, Becoming Cardiff manager. Now you called this watching a Forest game, saying how much you'd want him to be a for- Forest manager. This was when Mushi was, um, uh, yeah, uh, doing something on the sidelines. You know, pretending to be a manager. Um, you said Mick McCarthy come across as concise. He come across as knowing the league. He come across as knowing the players. He then goes to Cyprus to manage some team in Cyprus that turn over managers every week. Ab- yeah, and he went back to in the championship. Ab- well, Nicosia. The only, I think they're the only Cypriot team to make the group stage of the Champions League as well. Actually, um, yeah, they do turn over managers. He was only there two months. Um, I, I am a big fan of Mick McCarthy, and I know there are a lot of people out there who maybe are in the school of thought and linking him with Tony Pulis and Sam Allardyce and saying rather derogatory things about him. But I think the way he's gone into Cardiff, a lot of Cardiff fans see him as an underwhelming appointment. And I can maybe see that, but the situation nah. which Cardiff... What did they want? Well, the, what did they want? The situation Cardiff find themselves in at the minute, I believe they were... Um, there are um, rumblings of things going on behind the scenes as well, but we won't go into that because obviously we don't deal with remu- innuendo. Um, he's gone in there to just sort of... Um, He's he's only gone in till the end of the season, is the point I'm trying to make. His contract is initially the end of the season. Him and his long term assistant Terry Connor, they're joined at the hip. Didn't he do that didn't he do that as um he was an international manager, he's done that quite recently. Was it was he manager he was of Ireland? The manager of Republic of Ireland. He's been manager twice of the Republic of Ireland, isn't he? And he um stepped down But he went in there no know, knowing his replacement was already his replacement was the under twenty one manager. Yes. The, the, yes. the national under twenty so he went in there knowing that his replacement which Takes a lot of guts to go in there knowing your replacement's already waiting in the wings. Um, you could look at it both ways when it comes to the Cardiff job. A, 
he wants money or B, he actually just wants to get into football management. And I think with Mick McCarthy, he's never going to be short of work in the media. I, he just wants to be in football management. And the way he spoke as well, um, the the statement I saw, um, I just want to read this, Paul, and you'll see what I mean. And I'm, I, I just like Mick McCarthy as a person. I mean, I didn't see him as a player, but as a person and a manager, I just really, I really admire him. And he scares me as well. Um, I'm. Um, he said, "I'm cool with the length of the contract, and if I earn a longer term deal out of it, then good for me. If I don't, it's my fault. I guess I've got to earn that long term deal with my performance and the performance of the players." There's another statement as well. Well, another a couple of days later, where he said that he wasn't necessarily going in and demanding this, that, and the other in terms of transfers go. Um, and he said that he hasn't spoken to Vincent Tan yet, but he's willing to work with the squad he has inherited and try to get the best out of that and work out what's gone wrong under Neil Harris and try and work with that. Josh Murphy was linked with a lot of transfers away from the club and he's apparently now staying because Mick McCarthy wants to give him another chance. I think he's just happy to work with what he's got and he just wants to prove himself as well, doesn't he? I think people will see that short spell he's had in Cyprus and maybe not know the whole context of the way that Apple Nicosia has been run over the last few years. He only lasted two months, wasn't the greatest success. But he just wants to manage. He wants to get his hands dirty and coach and manage. And I just, I just. He was by no man. well, Nick Apple Nick is, he, he by no means was the shortest serving manager, which I think is quite hilarious. Um, I want to go on to the comments Neil Warnock made about Neil Harris, and um, I think he was very annoyed when Neil Harris went in, um, and commenting on the style of football that Neil Warnock was playing. And I think Neil Warnock um, come out and said. What he didn't like the style of football. What's that winning? <laughs> yes, I did. Yes, I, I thought that was that. a really good comment. <laughs> so, that's not putting the boot in, but it's a subtle trip. <laughs> so yeah, so it was a well done, Neil. It's great to have Mick McCarthy. You know, he knows this league. Um, he he does. wonders with Ipswich. The first season, they like, first season after the fans hounded him out. How's League One doing? Mm. <laughs> Norwich fans would love me for making that joke. Um, so I want to move on to Derby because we can't have a podcast without talking about Derby. However, they this is good news. They paid their players, um, which you know should be a given. But you know, with their current protracted takeover, um, this you know is taking a while. Rooney actually offered to defer some of his wages as well. Yes, very, very, thought, was it? very, very noble of him. And of course, obviously, you don't have to do that. I mean, people will say in the entitlement of them getting paid as much as they do they could afford to but obviously we don't know the financial situation of players and managers and stuff so we're not one to judge but um, yeah um, it is still um, still a lot of uncertainty out there regarding the takeover and when that can happen hopefully that means that Derby are now able to buy players because they were under a transfer embargo until they could um, pay the rest of the remaining wages for December hopefully that means that there is not an issue on going for payment of wages for this month because that may well be why there's been a couple of outgoings at Derby but we haven't seen any incoming players yet have we so it's just very much watch this space for the last few days of the transfer window Again, it can't be the easiest situation to find yourself in as a player or a member of staff at that football club when there's so much uncertainty going on and not knowing what tomorrow is going to bring. And I think Wayne Rooney's absolutely right in asking questions and putting it out there in a public forum because you may put it down to being unprofessional and keeping it in keeping it in house but at the same time I think fans have a right to know what's going on and maybe that uncertainty is throughout the club. So again, I take no pride no pun intended because they play at Pride Park obviously I, I take no pride in the fact that they're finding in life hard as, as a Nottingham Forest fan I do wish them all the best and hopefully they can sort this out because they are a big club we say this every week but it is sad to see any club in that state of um, not quite turmoil as yet but so much uncertainty just hope they get that sorted out soon and they're able to push themselves back up the championship table Absolutely I think with Wayne Rooney I was sceptical and I'm, I may even made some sort some some sort of offhand jokes um, when Philip Cocker was the manager Wayne Rooney's impressed me his professionalism has impressed me and, and if you're going to earn your corners uh, you know or earn your stripes as a manager to def- definitely make sense doing it in a, t- in a club that's got a little bit of un- instability because he's learning how to manage players you know he's he's managed a team that weren't even paid didn't know when they were going to be paid He's managing under a transfer embargo, and you know if he's going to do this for a, for a team that are in the Premier League one day, 
you'd hope he doesn't have these types of challenges, but he would have learned from these challenges. And I think Dar- Derby are, are going to be the better for it. Um, obviously, he's, his task number one, stay in the league. You know, that that's simple as simple as that. And I think, you know, it'd be interesting to see how they how they get on. So thank you all for watching. Um, as always, leave a thumbs up if you like the podcast. Comment down below if there's anything you think we've missed in the news or anything you want us to cover next week. Um, check out our mini series History of. Um, we really enjoyed doing the the, Bour- the Bournemouth episode. Obviously, we've got Barnsley, Blackburn Rovers, and Birmingham, um, and we've got a few more. Or we're going to do every club eventually by the end of the season. So keep an eye out for that. Subscribe if you want to see those because it will give you a little notification. You all know it's use YouTube. I don't know why everyone does this patronising. Um, if you, however, one thing YouTube doesn't do is if you want to watch us go through every transfer, FA Cup games involving the Championship. And the weekend's games that were scattered everywhere like they were meaningless. Half of them, well, none of them were on telly, but the FA Cup had prominence, as probably it should. Um, check us out on the main podcast, which is on any podcast subscription service that you use. That's goodbye from me. That's goodbye from me. And we'll speak to you all next week. We'll hopefully, hopefully with some more news. Goodbye. <laughs> Bye.